Gilbert Gottfried. I'm here with Frank Santo Padre, and we're once again recording at Nutmeg with our engineer Frank Verderosa. And this is Gilbert and Frank's Amazing Colossal Obsessions. Colossal Obsessions. I liked the week when you said Amazing Colossal Obsessions. <laughs> <laughs> Very Calvin Klein commercial, Nin- circa 1990. Obsession, yeah. Paul Rayburn is here, crack researcher. Oh, is researcher, that what he does? Researcher on crack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, at least that would at least that would be an excuse. And he's wearing a lovely spring shirt, and he's got a, a haircut, a, season, a, 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 well, a responsible I, seasonal haircut. I, I hate to look unruly on the podcast. You look, del- you, you look know. lovely. You look twelve years younger. <laughs> you almost said I look delicious. <laughs> <laughs> You're, those colors become you. Thank you. Yes, you're definitely a spring. Have you been told that? A spring? Oh, you're a spring. That's your season. Uh, yeah, no, I haven't been told okay. that. Okay. In I, fact, uh, can you spring out of the <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> So what are we here to talk well, about? Well, this, uh, this is one of those sad uh, uh, subjects. Yes. Uh, for a while, we wanted to get the great Bill Dana. <laughs> a long while. Yeah. And, we, <laughs> and it wasn't for a lack of trying, believe us. And and we we finally got in touch with him. We were sending emails, and he he would send emails back mm-hmm. to me and Dara, and it was like he'd send the funniest. What kinds of things did he write? He and his wife would send us the nicest. Here here's one. His wife Evie, uh, Bill Dana's wife Evie, uh, wrote in this email. We see that you got Carl. That's Carl Reiner. And Norman, Norman Lear, Mm -hmm. during their promotion of the documentary. And that is wonderful. Thank you for honoring the classic guys now all in their 90s. I can tell you that Bill will not be doing any interviews until after Gilbert's. Oh, that's nice. I wish it had happened. Yeah. Yeah. It was. And he was like. Seemed very enthusiastic. Yeah, we got his information from Cliff Nestor off, so I want to give Cliff credit for that, for connecting us. And and you guys were going back and forth on email for, for months. And he'd send us these funny, wild, and, and like reading the emails, I kept thinking, this guy is going to be a funny interview. At ni- sharp at 92. Yes. Yeah, he was. He had like just the weirdest email. And And then I started crazy. corresponding with Evie on Facebook. Uh, I just, I friended, there was a Bill Dana page and she wrote me back and she said, we listened to the podcast. And I, I said, oh, please tell Bill we want him on immediately and that he's a legend. And and she said, oh, I'll go in the other room and tell him right now. <laughs> I thought it was, a, you know, we, we started to think it was, uh, it was definitely uh, a foregone conclusion. And and I I got on the phone with him once and, and he told me he was a fan and he was familiar with my work, which was great. Oh God, what a compliment. I mean, Bill Dana. And and it's like, well, Bill Dana, most famous, of course, uh, as Jose Jimenez. Jose Jimenez. <laughs> <laughs> and nowadays, there would be riots in the street. There was protest then. Yeah. Over the character. When did he say he, he Paul, what, he did that character for the, uh, he created that character for the Steve Allen show. That's right. Uh, yeah, that's right. And uh, I can uh, just run through some of the early career for a minute. Um, yeah. William, we think Shathmary. Shathmary. He was Hungarian, a Hungarian Jew. Jewish yeah. descent. No Italian in him, as far as I can tell. No. Frank. Sorry about don't that. Don't think so. That's yeah. why I was a fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we think it's Shathmary. If somebody knows Sh- Bill yeah, and is a right. family and wants to correct but, us. But I, he he did grow up in a Spanish and Italian neighborhood. Mm-hmm. So that's I'm throwing you a little bone there. Yeah. Um, his older brother, Gilbert, do you know what his older brother, Irving, is famous for? Oh, we do know this. Yes. Dun, da, da, da. He composed dun, da, da, da. the Get Smart Unbelievable, theme. yeah. Wow, you know, you'd and see his name did, in the credits. Yeah. 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 Composed uh, the Get Smart theme. That was a great thing. It's a great yeah, thing to have on a, your resume. Yeah, it's unbelievable. So he started, he actually started writing for Don Adams. That was one of his early gigs. Yeah. And and he and they, he invented the Would You Believe? He sure did. You know, would you, which was a staple of Don Adams. Did you know that uh, Bill Dana had written I these things? I didn't know he created and, Well, Maxwell first, Smart was an outgrowth of a character from the Bill Dana show. Right. From the so house, they, the, uh, the yes, house right. detective. I, I remember right. that. Yeah, Glick. But yeah. I, I, today on YouTube, you Byron can Glick. find the very first Would You Believe 
joke from the from Get Smart. And uh, so he hit Don Adams says, would you believe, he says, I suffered the Chinese water torture, one drop on the forehead every minute. Would you believe they had 300 gallons of water? And the guy just shakes his head and he says, would you believe a quart? <laughs> he says, how about once a day with a glass of water and an eyedropper? Yeah. <laughs> it's, very, a tr- it's a the triple. Very first, would you it's a triple. Yeah, would right. you believe this entire warehouse is surrounded by a hundred cops with Dobermans? Right. I find and, that hard to believe. Would you believe ten security guards and a bloodhound? <laughs> I don't think so. How about a Boy Scout with rabies? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was the rhythm of There's them. There's also, if you if you look up the uh, the water torture one, guess who is in the scene while he's doing this? Uh, Bill Dana. Oh, but he's Bill in two. He's in, in two. Get is, smart is episodes. In the scene. Yeah, yeah. that's one yeah. of the ones. Yeah, he was an NBC pay. Age. Yeah, Bill Dana. That's how he actually got so his, his career in the on business. On the Steve story. Allen show, they did a they had a man in the street. Yep. Segment, and so he was involved in that. And the thing about his name, and we can't pronounce his name, he told a story. I think in the Ed Sullivan show at one point, he said some woman came up to him and said, "Well, what's your real name?" And he goes, "William Shathmary." She goes, "Oh, I can see why you changed it to Jimenez." <laughs> 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 well, Dana actually was his mother. His mother's name was Dina, D E N A, and that's where he got right. that's where he got right. Bill Dana from. His real name was Bill, and Don Adams was a lifelong friend. He he wrote for he, you know people don't think of him as a writer. He did a lot of comedy writing. Yeah, Bill did. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, he wrote yeah. that classic yeah. All in the Family episode that we were just talking about outside yeah, with, yeah, with Larry Kenny, tell, the yeah. Sammy Davis. Oh yeah, episode. Yeah. Uh, but he wrote for a lot of people. He wrote uh, he wrote for Spike Jones and Don Knotts, and he wrote sitcoms like Chico and the Man, and he wrote for the Smothers Brothers. He was a very prolific ro- uh, comedy writer. And you know, there's no way around it. I remember watching him as Jose Jimenez, mm-hmm. and I crack up. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, sure. I I I think everybody. And now that was one of those things, though, where it came to that, you know, scary underbelly of show business where it was like the mob got a hold of the tapes of him as Jose Jimenez. And I think they got all the money. Uh, Cliff told us a story, I think it's Bill Dana, where they release yeah. an album without his knowledge. Yeah, I think they recorded Jeez. him yes, they recorded the Ed him. Sullivan show. They recorded him and they released a Bill Dana <laughs> record that he had no knowledge of. Pretty and sure they, it's Bill Dana. We'll, du- the, we'll double back, we'll double yeah, check on that. Yeah, he was on Ed Sullivan and they just put a tape recorder to the TV. Yeah, <laughs> and as long as we're talking about Cliff, check out uh, uh, on Cliff's uh, uh, website, Classic Showbiz, on his blog. He has uh, uh, two very, very lengthy interviews with Bill uh, that are that are really worth reading, uh, where where they cover everything. Yeah, that that character was created for a skit. I think the first skit of, of for Jose Jimenez is he was an instructor for department store Santa Claus. That way, like, <laughs> and he writes <laughs> Joe 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 on the blackboard, <laughs> teaching them how to <laughs> <laughs> Joe Joe. <laughs> and then he came back as a deep sea diver oh, and, and, as and a, uh, a, I think astronaut the album. finally got released as like he was like the first man on the moon yeah he was an astronaut, yeah. <laughs> astronaut was a guy. Right. but right. The, i mean the thing that made it funny was he was completely unaware of how he sounded or why yeah. people couldn't you know he would just he would just march on and, you know i teach santa how to speak yeah well <laughs> yeah. the interesting thing about the character he wound up retiring it over time because there were there were protests there were people who didn't like it there were people who misunderstood and thought that he was making fun he was belittling immigrants and latinos and he claimed that he never was that that it was a you know, it was a a, a, a a sad character. It was a character that was an immigrant trying to assimilate. Yes. And you were supposed to sympathize with this character, not mock him. And somehow the meaning was lost. His intent was lost. Yeah. And he said he knew it was time to retire the character when people would walk up to him in the street and say, I love the way you do that dumb Mexican. Oh, yeah. And he and he realized, because he was a very sensitive guy. I mean, yeah. by all accounts, a really beloved guy and didn't didn't want to be misunderstood, didn't want the character misunderstood. Um, and, and, and he finally read the character's obituary at an event in Los Angeles when he when he retired him. And, and what was happening with us, it's like we were getting the emails that were great. And then it was like he kept saying he'd do it. And he was really excited to. Yeah, I wish we'd gotten to him sooner. Yeah, and then he would, he had to cancel one time, and then he had to cancel again, right. and then we knew. Right. Well, and, he, and they, he said he was going to the doctor, and 
And there's there's a wonderful line in one of the in that Evie sent to us. We find laughter sustains us. That's nice. It, it you know they never she didn't say, you know as as Frank pointed out he was ninety two, so it's not it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to ask what he died of. But uh, it was a there's a little it makes you wonder if. Maybe he was sick. Maybe that's there was a reason they couldn't. Do oh, the I'm podcast, sure he. You know? I'm sure he was sick. I mean, there were delays too because he was in Nashville and we were trying to figure out a way to get him to a microphone because we didn't really want to do a phone call because we've come to a, a point in the show right. with, with this show where we prefer not to do uh, a phone interviews and they couldn't figure out Skype and it was a little bit of a comedy of errors. Yeah. Um, now, now we, now we wish we had the phone call. Well, the irony is, had we booked him, <laughs> yeah. had we tried to get him right off the bat, which I, you know, and I keep kicking myself. I just said outside, I was talking to Andrea and and Frank and you, and I said that the uh, the enemy of this show is the Grim Reaper, because we've lost uh, so many people that we've that we've tried to book. I mean, I have a list in my office, so I keep crossing names out. You know, it's become a a, a dark joke on the uh, on the on the podcast on the Listener Society and Frank. Uh, and then wrote something another, about it yesterday, but it's really true. Another thing with this show is that, and this is another thing that we both kick ourselves about, is when we'll see a name of somebody who died recently and we'll go, we didn't even fucking think of this guy. Well, and that's why we appreciate the fans sending names. Well, look, our list is pretty long. There's oh, a couple yes, of hundred yes. names on it. <laughs> and, and, and most times, I would say 75% of the time, I see a name posted on Facebook. Hey, how about this guy? How about Henry Silva? Yes, we've thought of Henry Silva. How about William Daniels? Yes, William Daniels said no thanks. So we've pretty much, you know, we've reached out to a lot of people. Oh, yes. But there are occasionally people that, that, that slip through the cracks. And uh, listen, this was one we were working full time. Oh, we were. We were pushing it and pushing it. And, and uh, he and was it, truly great. It's, it's funny that there were ones like with um, Marvin Kaplan. Yeah, that we that, got in under the wire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We got it. in before the door slammed closed because he, I think he died about two weeks later. It was a little after that, yeah. but not not much longer. Yeah, we, I mean, they, we, we, we've we've caught a lot of them. I mean, we've got a lot. We've uh, also, we yeah, we also interviewed you know, people in our in their 90s three years ago who were still with us, yeah, like yes. Roger Gorman. Yes. Yeah. You and know, and Larry Storch at, uh, at, and Marty uh, Allen. Mad Magazine. Um, Al Jaffe. Al Jaffe. Yeah. But Marty yeah. Allen and Larry and Corman were in like our first six months and yeah. they're still going strong. So you just, you just never know. You well, know, we didn't know Adam man- West was going to It's good to mention that because we don't want people to start turning us down because it, if I even have a conversation with those guys, my health no, is going to. No, that's <laughs> just a rumor Frank Verderosa <laughs> likes to promote on social media. <laughs> but my wife is, is smart. She says, start with the, start with the 98 year old. Oh, start working your way backward. <laughs> uh, well, my theory is has always been hey watch the road uh, it's your hit yeah, that's caught on <laughs> yeah on, on social media uh, a, a great talent bill dana did a lot of different things um and yes as you said uh, uh don adams character maxwell smart well don adams started a character on the bill dana show and he was a house detective named byron glick an inept house detective and he talked like that and that's kind of where that's kind of where uh but 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 Dana said that Don Adams was always generous about giving Bill Dana credit. Wow! For writing that character, for create, for uh, uh, inspiring so much of his act, um, and he did write the nude bomb, the oh, uh, the get God. smart, the get, get smart, smart movie. Okay, we don't have to include everything. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the Bill Dana show? Do you remember who oh, played yes. his boss? Who played his boss? Ooh. Wait, wait, was it John MacGyver? No, it was no. somebody in that vein, a little thinner. A little thinner than John MacGyver. Somebody, a, 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 a sort of a skinny, tall, maybe a John MacGyver type, if I may stretch a little Ooh, bit. This, this is going to kill me. When Jonathan Harris from oh Lost in Space God. was the boss. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Bill actually worked with a friend of mine. He worked with Herb, the late Herb Sargent, who was a, a, a mentor of mine and a, a great comedy writer, original original uh, Saturday Night Live writer. Um, when he joined the uh, when he joined the Steve Allen show, and of course we were saying when Bill passed that he's the last of that repertory company. Oh Tom yeah, Tom Poston and Louis Nye, and Don oh and God, Don Knotts yes. and Pat Harrington. We lost. That was another guy we were dying to get. 
and uh, and he slipped through our fingers. Um, so, and he wrote that wonderful All in the Family episode that 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 we just talked about. Uh, where Sammy, where Archie leaves, uh, or Sammy leaves his briefcase in oh, Archie's yes. cab. Oh, yes. Yes. That's yeah. one of the because, classics. Yeah. yeah. Because Archie is, is, is sort of out of character. He's actually impressed with Sammy Davis and he's very nice to him. And, and then, of course, it ends with Sammy Davis posing for a picture and Sammy Davis gives him a kiss on the cheek. It's the quintessential. And Archie is just immobilized. It's great. <laughs> it's, it's the perfect All in the Family episode. Yeah, and, it has, and Archie keeps saying to Edith, don't say anything about his eye. Oh, don't yeah. <laughs> and, sh- and then he says, oh, Mr. Davis, you take cream and sugar in your eye? <laughs> <laughs> and, and Worth I remember, seeing again. Archie says to Sammy, he goes, look. I know you had no choice in being colored, but what made you turn Jew? (laughs) (laughs) Great stuff. Great stuff. Yeah. That's and he well, he he had another person he was friends with forever was Norman Lear. Oh yeah. Yeah. They went way back. You know, we're lucky. We got Norman. We got oh, Carl yeah. Reiner. Oh we got Dick, Dick Van, Dyke. Van Dyke. We got all these people in their 90s. And, you know, uh, the, the, the last time we sat to do a tribute like this, which was not too long ago, was for Adam West. It was last week. Last week. And uh, there's some interesting parallels. I mean, the, the, the one, the, uh, uh, we got to mention a cameo on... Uh, Batman. What well, we were taught, we talked oh, about, yeah. but Batman and Robin climbing. You know, they would climb oh, yes. up walls and no, they would tilt the set e- and all. Yeah, that. Even so, as like a little kid, every little kid knew what I did. That special yeah. effect. Yeah. So, well, the, I told so you my the story. Bill Dana bit was he? Uh, Batman's climbing up the wall and he opens a window and starts a conversation with Batman. You as know, Jose that, Jimenez, as yeah, Jose he's in Jimenez. character <laughs> right. when he comes through the window. We better hurry, Batman. Not too fast, Robin. In good bat climbing, as in good driving, one must never sacrifice safety for speed. Try it again, Batman. Who are you, citizen? Oh, my name is Jose Jimenez. And who may I ask, are you two nice people cl- climbing down the side of this building when the elevators are available? I'm Batman. And I'm Robin. Oh. oh. I'm the foreman of a jury. We're trying to make up our minds what to do to a terrible, nasty criminal person, you know? Oh, trying to find out now. Excuse me. Oh, oh, you decided? What? Oh. Fellas, could you leave the rope? But, you know, the two of them... Were they, they're similar because they both of those guys were like working actors. I mean, Bill Dana yeah. wrote, you know, did a lot of other things. He acted a lot, but they, but you, know, I've got you know, like the uh, filmography and stuff. There's, I don't know, if he, as he has fifty credits as an actor. I don't know, I don't know how many as mo- as uh, director or as writer. He wrote a lot. TV, and I mean, he's just Plus he was just albums. working all the time, right? You know, right, right, right. And he and he did, I think, Golden Girls toward the end of his career. Golden Girls. Oh yeah, and... he would pop up on there. Yeah, as a lot of those guys popped up on Golden Girls. That's a show where, boy, I'll tell you, the <laughs> character, character actors. That's a little like the Love Boat. Oh yeah, you yes. go through that roster, and it's like, oh, Leslie Nielsen, Herb Edelman, and you just and you just click them off. Uh, one after the other. What are some of those other credits? Of, some, well, of, you know, no, he, he retired. He retired him and Jose Jimenez in the early seventies. And did. I was trying to remember. I just found it here that he had in nineteen eighty eight. He briefly brought it back for Smothers just, Brothers thing. Smothers Brothers. Well, what, what better place to do it? Right. Than a Smothers yes. Brothers show, right? right. And uh, just discuss it. And that was the last. Uh, the last time we saw Jose. What were Jimenez. some of those other acting credits in the? He 60s was in. And he 70s. was in. Uh, there, oh, most of these are like one show. Saint Elsewhere. He was in one. Ep- he was how he, he was. Mandel's he was actually dad. in several episodes. I think in that one. Yep. Uh, and uh, um, Mr. Fiscus. Right. That was that. What other what other shows? Uh, what he, other he, shows? Because he worked a lot in the sixties. I don't remember this one. Zorro and Son. Don't remember that one either. But I like the <laughs> I like the premise. <laughs> no, like no the soap kind of radio. Mo, no soap radio was no with Steve Gutenberg. Radio. Yes, and future, future what else podcast. We yes, here? we hope. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Golden Girls. You told six or seven Golden Girls episodes. Yeah. Uh, have <laughs> nineteen eighty seven. 
Haven't gun will travel. Haven't gun will travel. <laughs> but he did a lot of other popular shows in the '60s. What do you have there? What you have, have the I IMDb. Like, I got to go back. Did you they're, in, they're in reverse yeah. order here. Great Expectations, 1978. What do we got? Uh, got some of these things. Window, 1978 TV movie. Windows, doors, and keyholes. Don't know that one. It sounds like a this old house uh, repair. I know he did a, a TV show. movie called A Guide for the Married Woman with uh, another one of our ninety-year-old uh, guests, uh, Peter Marshall. Oh wow! Nineteen seventy-six, he did an Ellery Queen. Yep. And, and the character. Tell me the ethnic background of this cal- character. Salvatore Mercadante. I don't know. He probably, <laughs> well, he played his fair share of Italians. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure that's Italian, but if you say so. I'd... Remember Ellery <laughs> Queen with David Wayne and Jim Hutton? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He was it, very visible on television in the 60s and the 70s. I mean, I remember him on variety shows uh, specifically, but he, <clears> but he, <throat> he acted a lot. He turned up in a lot of different things. He, he was uh, in 1973, the Bob Hope Show. Oh. Has Bob Hope come up in this show? Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. I think he produced or wrote an animated project, too. I don't I don't know. Let's see. The Courtship of Eddie's Father. Sure. With a Bill, Hollywood Palace. Bill Bixby. He was on about five times. Hollywood Palace. That was a famous variety show. Adam West hosted that show. 1967, An Italian in America. Yeah, he played Italians. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> see? Like Hector Elizondo. He played Another okay, Latino oh, actor my who, God. who plays a lot of Italians. Oh, we got to get him we on this We got to get Hector Elizondo. All right, so here's 19- well, We just booked Tony Lobianco. Oh, so yeah. So I did, I do, am I, how many Italians am I allowed a month? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's not I, even uh, Italian. Hector's right, not Italian. I, I, I think we've uh, already filled the quota. <laughs> in, <laughs> in, in 1967, he played Marvin Klump in what show? You got me. The Man from Uncle. Marvin Klump. Oh, everybody was on the man from that Uncle. was, and the episode was the Matterhorn Affair. Yeah, he was Nin- big, big in the sixties. Nineteen sixty six was the Batman cameo. That same year, he was on Bob Hope Presents the Chrysler Theater. You know who his first comedy partner was? A guy. You know that. You know a guy named Gene Wood. You know that? Does that ring a bell? This is our hardcore listeners will know this. When Gene Wood was a game show announcer, not a host. He was the announcer on Match Game and Tattletales. Oh my God! G- you know his and you'd know yes, his voice. Yes. As soon as we dialed it up, Gene Wood. Gene Wood was a guy like him. It was from Quincy, Massachusetts, and they started out as a comedy well, duo. Who is the guy? I think I had this, but I don't think I wrote it down. In the in the Santa Claus teaching the Santa Claus. Pat Harrington Jr. Pat Harrington was yes. the guy who was because he, he's great too. The you great know, Pat Harrington he absolutely I had the, plays it straight. I had the know? honor of working with him just before we started this podcast. Really, and by the time we we got our wheels rolling and yeah. and and started getting into it, he passed away. Yeah, yeah. Um, but. Um, he, he performed Jose Jimenez. It got so popular, he did it at a JFK inauguration. <laughs> <laughs> he did it in a, in, a, in a Flintstones. I think it's on a, in a Flintstones episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, or on a, I think it's on a Flintstones record. I mean, that character turned up everywhere. Oh, yeah. And it turns up, this is interesting, when Alan Shepard was lifting off in 1961 because the Jose Jimenez astronaut thing had become so popular... Uh, this is interesting trivia. Deke Slayton, uh, his co-pilot, turned to him and said, "Okay, Jose, you're on your way." You're right. <laughs> which was wow. a, which was a nod to uh, to uh, to the to uh, Bill's character. And and I remember in one of the Jose Jimenez, where he's the astronaut. Right. The interviewer says, uh, "So is that a crash helmet?" And he goes, "I hope not." I certainly <laughs> hope not. <laughs> <laughs> he was hilarious and worked with a lot of our guests. Like I said, Peter Marshall in A Guide for the Married Man. He played Howie Mandel's father on St. Elsewhere. He did Rossetti and Ryan with one of our guests, Ooh. Tony Roberts. Oh, my God. Wow. And, of course, uh, two Get Smart episodes with Barbara Feldon. Yes. And, of course, that guess. All in the Family episode yeah. with Norman. I mean, they're looking at his. I mean, it's like an encyclopedia of '60s TV. Make room for Daddy. Uh, it was well, Danny Thomas. Well, he, yeah, then, you know, d- yeah, yeah. He did a lot of work with Danny Thomas. He, this is something I think Cliff brought up with us. He hosted an ill-fated talk show. Did this come up in your research? Called the Las yes! Vegas Show. Oh yeah. my what God! Do you remember this? Oh my it God! I that, remember watching that. It was for the that. fourth network that never materialized. 
It was supposed to be on a fourth network called the United Network. Yeah. And that was their flagship show with Joanne Worley and Pete Bar Beauty. <laughs> How about that? For some names. And I think it lasted a month. And I, the network folded, I remember, went out of business like overnight. I remember <laughs> the building seeing put an out episode. Of show. No. Yeah. Yeah, the building. Remember we had Cliff show. in here? We did a mini episode about obscure talk shows. Yes. And you were trying to name, you were trying to come up with that weird talk show host that, 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 oh, yeah, that yeah. nobody could name. And we were talking about who was the guy that was married to uh, 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 Tina Louise? Les Crane? Yes, had Les a show. Crane. Oh my god! Yeah, and, and, and Woody Woodbury. Woody Woodbury, who's still around? Maybe yeah. we can. Maybe we can find Woody Woodbury. Um, anyway, he hosted this thing called the Las Vegas Show on this 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 United Network startup that that uh, was a was a big white elephant and went away practically overnight. So that's a that's a fun piece of trivia about Bill. Gosh, I, I uh, there was so much to talk about uh, with him, and uh, we'll kick ourselves over this one a long time. But then again, we tried super hard. So, what are you gonna do? Anyway, so this has been Gilbert and Frank's amazing colossal obsessions, remembering Bill Dana, the great Bill Dana. A new uh, policy uh, here at the Hungry Eyes to bring you people who are in the news currently. And the gentleman you're about to meet could possibly be the most important man in any of our lives. He's the United States Air Force officer who has been chosen to be the first man sent into outer space. I'm referring to the chief astronaut with the United States Interplanetary Expeditionary Force. And here he is now. How do you do, sir? May we have your name? My name? I'll say Mana. You're the chief astronaut with the United States Interplanetary Expeditionary Force? I am the chief astronaut. <laughs> with the United States Interplanetary. With my name, I'll say him mine. <laughs> Mr. Jimenez, could you tell us a little about your spacesuit? Yeah. It's very uncomfortable. <laughs> 